So not technically a dog breed, the Maltipoo is a well-known cross between a Maltese and a Poodle. Maltipoos are friendly and gentle, just like their parent breeds. They are also extremely cute and they are great companions for any type of family. If you're thinking of bringing home this adorable canine, it would be best to get to know them first, and we're here to help you do that. Find out why you better start saving today if you're thinking about bringing one of these cute little guys home for yourself. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because you don't want to miss this fact. Welcome to Dog Oracle! Before we get into today's video, if you like videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. It would mean a lot to us and every dog out there. Okay, let's get into 10 things you must know before bringing home a Maltipoo. Number 10. They are versatile dogs. The Maltipoo is a mix between a toy poodle and a Maltese. They are mostly well known in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada, but they can adapt to other environments as well. Because the Maltese and Toy Poodles are both popular dog breeds, the Maltipoo's breeders intended it to be just as popular, affectionate, and adaptable to many household settings. And I think you'd agree that the breeders made an excellent choice in pairing the Maltese and Poodle, because the result is an affectionate and fun-loving Maltipoo that resembles the cute and affectionate temperament of the parent breeds. Maltipoos are mostly lap dogs that love to cuddle. These little dog thrives in a warm and cozy environment, but they are quite content in smaller spaces like apartments. As mentioned earlier, this dog can adapt to any environment in a short amount of time, which also means they also make great travel companions. Number 9. They're hypoallergenic. Because both of the Varen breeds are hypoallergenic, the Maltipoo also has this feature. However, do keep in mind that there is no dog breed in the world that's 100% hypoallergenic. Most allergies are triggered by dog dander or fur, but since Maltipoos have hair instead of fur, they're less likely to trigger allergies. If you're a person who tends to sneeze and have allergies flare up around dogs, then the Maltipoo might be a great choice for you. Number 8. They live for quite a long time. Compared to other dog breeds, the Maltipoo only has a few health issues. Although they're small, they have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. Of course, this time frame is determined by various factors like their diet, physical activities, and overall health. So if you want to make sure that your Maltipoo lives the most out of those 15 years, then make sure that they receive an appropriate diet and exercise. To add to this, regular visits to your veterinarian is also important. Who knows, maybe if your Maltipoo is well cared for, they can exceed their estimated lifespan. Fun fact, some Maltipoos have lived over 17 years. Number 7. They might be high-maintenance dogs for some. If you're the type to worry about getting piles of fur on your couch, you can forget about that concern when you own a Maltipoo. Maltipoos usually don't shed much, and some of them don't shed at all. But these dogs have mixed genes, so predicting whether their coat will resemble that of a Poodle or a Maltese is difficult. In any case, the Poodles and Maltese are not heavy shedders, so there should be no need to be concerned about excessive shedding. But what's the catch? Well, this dog is pretty high maintenance. Although Maltipoos shed very little, don't let that fool you into believing they don't require brushing. These dogs should be brushed on a daily basis. A 10-minute daily brushing routine will maintain your dog's coat, keeping it clean and mat-free. Maltipoos, like other poodle mixes, will need haircuts a couple times a year. Not to mention, the hair around their face and head will need more frequent attention. You might need to trim it at least once a month to keep them from bumping into walls and furniture around your house. Number 6. They are companion dogs through and through. If you're looking for a close canine companion, then the Maltipoo is a safe option. This is a companion dog at heart who loves to be around their human families at all times. Although their poodle instincts causes them to chase things that seem interesting to them, they are more likely to take a nap on your lap. This dog is great for families too. They thrive on human attention and they're tolerant and playful with little kids. Their loyal and patient temperament makes them safe around rowdy children. 
but you should always supervise your kids when playing with any type of animal. But if you're living alone or you're simply not the type to socialize much, then this dog will also accompany you in solitude. The Maltipu is also quite known to be a little nervous around unfamiliar faces. Some experts say it's due to their smaller size. So if you're introducing new animals or people, do it with caution and patience. Number 5. They are best suited for older children. The Maltipu is a social and friendly dog, and they can easily get along with small children. However, they're a small breed, and this makes them fragile. This is why they're best suited for older kids, because they understand how to handle smaller animals more properly. Toddlers can't fully control their actions, so they might end up hurting your little Maltipu. Even worse, it can be the other way around. If you do have toddlers and still choose to have a Maltipu, then make sure to supervise any type of interaction and teach your kids early. Number 4. They tend to suffer from separation anxiety. Maltipus can be left alone at home. However, as with other dogs, this is not suggested for long periods of time. While most Maltipu owners say that their dogs are okay on their own, it does take some time for them to adjust. But once they have a few toys to enjoy, the Maltipu is perfectly content to stay at home alone for a few hours. You should also keep in mind that the Maltipu is a very social kind of dog. They need human or animal companionship to stay entertained and live a happy life. They may become lonely if they don't receive this. As a result, they may suffer from separation anxiety. Their parent breed, the Poodle, is known to have bad cases of separation anxiety. Plus, it doesn't help that the Maltese are lab dogs that thrive on human affection. You should take this seriously because some cases of separation anxiety can affect your Maltipu even when they become adults. As a dog owner, you should remember that for dogs, separation anxiety is like an allergy. It will never go away on its own. This means that you should ease into leaving your dog alone for longer periods of time by starting with a few minutes and gradually working your way up. Number 3. They are designer dog breeds. Designer dog breeds are becoming increasingly popular in recent years. These dogs were created to provide specific physical and personality features that are appealing to some dog owners. Among all of these designer breeds, the Maltipu is without a doubt the most popular. But why should you choose a designer dog over purebred dogs? Well, it all revolves around potential diseases. Crossbreeds tend to be less likely to contract diseases than purebred dogs. This means saving money from frequent vet visits, not to mention heartache. On top of this, designer dogs also have a more even temperament than their purebred counterparts. Breeders can choose two separate breeds with pleasing personalities, and this can be passed down to their litters. In the Maltipus case, they have the obedience of the Maltese and the intelligence of the Poodle. Number 2. They're a great companion for first-time owners. Is the Maltipu good for inexperienced owners? Yes, they are. These dogs are very polite, sociable, and simple to teach. Although a Maltipu puppy will require a lot of effort to train because they tend to have a mind of their own. Of course, as a first-time dog owner, you do have to perform the basics, like crate training and more. I'll also leave a link below the video to a great resource that can help you train and develop your multiple's hidden intelligence, eliminate bad behavior, and create an obedient, well-behaved dog of your dreams. You might be relieved to know that this dog has an eagerness to please, which means training them won't be much of a hassle. As long as you remain consistent in doing so, your multiple will respond to commands quickly. Do remember to give them praise and a treat to praise them for work well done. Being a first-time owner can be puzzling sometimes, but on the bright side, your effort will be worth it. All the time that you dedicate to training your Maltipu will strengthen your bond, resulting in great companionship. Number 1. They can be expensive. So, how much does a Maltipu cost? Well, a puppy can cost upwards of $4,000, and the price can vary depending on where you get them from. Despite the fact that Maltipus are not classified as purebred dogs by the American Kennel Club, they can get expensive due to a lot of reasons. For one, there's a ton of consumer demand. 
most breeders are taking full advantage of these dogs' popularity as companions and family pets. Other factors such as coat colors, sizes, and the breeder's location can also affect the price. It's also important to thoroughly check and do your research to make sure that you aren't getting your multipoo from a puppy mill. Not only are these mills bad for the overbred parents, but you also run the chance of bringing a sick puppy into your home. We hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below which fact about the multipoo you like the most, or if you missed anything you think should have made the list. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And check out another one of our videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.